Okay, so we are back from the crash. Um, I'm actually going to have to... Let me... Have I still got my thing? Hold on. I'm just going to pause alert so we don't have to sit through 20 gifted subs that LB just dropped the bomb. Like, seriously. Crazy, crazy support. Anyway, we are back recording. Back with YouTube. So, I don't know what happened there, but my comp whole computer just completely and utterly died um so yeah team spin weirdly said the weird schematic of doom which seemingly had more detrimental effects than we believed so let me see uh let's see if it breaks us again let's, let's hold out for good luck We didn't break this time. Huzzah! Um, this looks like it has something to do with energy generation. Hmm. Am I reading this right? I don't know. You tell me, Melville. I mean, I'm meant to be the, the technical guy, a person, a robot amongst us. Yeah, that's, but thanks again, LB. That's absolutely crazy support, buddy. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right, let's continue on our... Oh, jeez. This seems like a long winding road, doesn't it? here has been sort of like covered by the snow drift so trying to follow the beacons is probably the best kind of way to negate this it's an old saying about how in the end the sea will claim everything i have no doubt that this is true in the long history of the human species entire regions have disappeared under the waves places like Beringia and Doggerland still echo in our cultural memories. But we shouldn't forget that life began in the sea. We are the children of the sea. And it's not through floods and ruin that the sea will claim everything, but through us. Yeah, through us, because we're the ones that have wrecked the planet. With alarming frequency, our mythological narratives conceptualize our separation from nature as a fall, a punishment for sinning, a loss of innocence, a decline from a golden age. We believe that a better state of humanity is possible, but insist that this state must be in the past, and yet our historical experience has been the exact opposite. For all the horrors of modern war, and they are considerable, relatively few people today have to suffer an unspeakable act have to suffer the unspeakable agonies that our ancestors went through on a daily basis. It is doubly ironic, doubly ironic, that we place our golden age in the past, but we rarely ever considered what life was actually like for the people whose genes we carry. How cold they were, how hungry, how frightened of the cruelty of, the nat of nature, what unspeakable pains they must have experienced when they were sick or injured. How many of their children they had to lose, unable to help, begging in the heavens for mercy and never receiving an answer. The past is slowly rece receding, the slowly receding tidal wave of grief. It is three five five eight. Like seriously, the battle for human emancipation is not yet won, and the path has been far from straightforward. And yet, in but a few thousand years, we have estimated a great deal of suffering that before must have seemed unavoidable and eternal. Some still suffer, their lives held ransom by politics and economics, but at least now we know that a better world is truly possible, 
and it liars in the future. Mm. Uh, I'm not sure what it is for Furious, to be fair. Um, my computer didn't completely die. I didn't get no error messages or anything. I just had like a my hard drive light was just blinking, but it seems to be recovered, so we're all right. Um, day 132. We had a bit of an instance day, nothing major, but it still woke us all up. Sun was away from the camp, alone, even alone, even though we had agreed that we should always go in teams, and she encountered a group of herbivores that we saw on our first date. Cows, they're called. Apparently our ancestors kept them as livestock. Eustathius says they squeeze them for liquid, but I find that hard to believe. But I digress. Sun encountered the herd, and just as predicted, the animals were passive at first, friendly even. Sun decided to abandon her survey to study them for a while, which went well until a group of wolves, formerly dogs, a type of pet, entered the clearing and caused a stampede. Sun is alright, only minor scratches to the bodywork and a few, a few torn wires, but it was still a close call. I guess we'd gotten a little complacent, a little too comfortable. We'll have to be more careful from now on. Hmm. Now I have to talk science fiction for a bit because I love science fiction, but it drives me nuts. There's this cliche that shows up over and over and every time someone uses it, everyone pretends it's really profound. It goes something like this. A scientist invents something good, but, oh no, it's actually really bad. You could have something that makes your life better, but no, you can't. How dare you even want it? That's hubris, that's playing God. And it's never anything that reflects the real world, right? It's never, oh no, you invented a vaccine for cervical cancer. Oh no, you invented a new class of antibiotics. Oh no, you cured malaria. How dare you? Those diseased mosquitoes are way more important than human lives. How did science fiction become so reactionary? You know, if we all thought this way, you guys wouldn't even exist. At least Alex agrees with me. She has good taste. Very true, though, isn't it? In science fiction. It's always the most amazing discovery known to man, but there is always some caveat as to why we can't use it because of this, that, or the other. Okay, here is one of our stars. Stars. Interesting. I was thinking more act, not cat, but uh, yeah, I see the cat. Act, tack. Wondering then if there's potentially some letters to find, or some switches, or something to find relates to each one of those potentially I mean this would kind of be I think that's like where I just went to potentially so, I mean, this is, that's north. It's in this direction somewhere. Let's go off the beaten track a bit more.
Kind of just does look due north if that is any sort of bearing on. Did I just take fall damage? What? Ah, that's new. Fall damage wasn't the right term to use, but we kind of seem to take some sort of stun damage or something along that line, those lines. Interesting. Not to steal phrases from LB or anything, but yeah, that's interesting. Oh, hello. Okay, so it shows us more than just secret puzzles then. It's showing us more than just stars. So these are the stars. And it would appear that we then have these up here. Now, whether these are the... I would have to check before we go to the megastructure the next time, but it might just be the megastructure openings or it might be actually completing the laser puzzles inside the megastructures. But yeah, that's interesting. Very interesting. Uh, this is not the right way. To use. No, I'm trying to stick to the path. This is not the right way. Also thinking I wouldn't oh, I got a bit of a If we believe that life is inherently valuable, if we think that other species are worth preserving, and we recognize that most of the universe is barren, then it follows that we have a duty not only to defend life, but to spread it. If life is the most valuable thing in the universe, then perhaps, in a sense, the cosmos itself is depending on us to do this. Like birds carrying seeds to uninhabited islands. Maybe that's our role in the galactic ecology. Possibly. Quite possibly. South west and one in the south. Okay. Oh. I maybe should have refreshed the furious maybe when the after the stream had gone down, but it's it's cool. It's all good. On Cornelius. There are some people whose true importance 
you just don't notice at first. People who quietly hold things together without making a big deal of it. That was Cornelius. That's what Cornelius was. Always by Athena's side, he calmly and carefully helped us all stay on track, reminding us of our shared humanity and the values that had brought us this far. I cannot imagine how painful it must have been when Athena left him behind. When he went on his so-called research expedition, most people thought he went looking for her. To be honest, I thought he might never come back, and I was surprised when he finally did. I still don't understand how she could leave him. They seemed to love each other so deeply. After he returned, Cornelius was different. He founded the Museum of Simulation and very rarely left its premises. The archive scholars don't do, doted on him, but he walled himself off by becoming almost as much of a recluse as Eustathius. And only then did I slowly understand how much the city had lost. Interesting, like, that Cornelius was one of the, like, founders, like, the founding initial founding group um, and obviously when Athena left it seemed to have like a, a detrimental impact on quite a few of them but the fact that they're kind of, he's kind of saying like that the kind of, he almost like shut himself off and became um, a recluse very much like Eustathius was almost like it's almost like they did they go out and Try to find answers and find something that they didn't like the answer of so they came back and kind of didn't know what to do with themselves anymore or was it just a case that they did go looking for Athena and didn't find her and they were just ultimately became a bit lost I don't know too many rhetorical questions for my liking God appears and God is light to those poor souls who dwell in the night but does a human form display to those who dwell in realms of day like exerted from considerations by youth Stathius. Whilst it's hard from our vantage point to fully believe in one of the ancient religions, I must admit that I have come to believe in the existence of a prime mover, not a designer as such, certainly not an intra intravent god but some force that sets the universe into itself, itself into motion i do not know if it's possible for us to ever truly understand that this being since it must by definition exist outside our understanding of reality but i do believe that it exists does it look upon us with love are we entertainment perhaps does it preserve some memory of us when we die all of this i cannot answer but I do not disbelieve those who honestly speak of having experienced some manner of belief, brief communion with this en entity. It's simply too common an experience in human history to easily dis discount. As the motion of the universe proceeds from the Big Bang, so whatever force animates us, whatever constitutes the true foundation of consciousness, proceeds from the prime mover. Think about this, Mother. I don't believe in any kind of prime mover, but I thought you should read it because you, Stathius, is an intelligent person, and he came to this conclusion after a great deal of thought. It's important to respectfully consider points of view we don't agree with. Moderni mod modern modernity, modernity is so great, why is everyone so fundamentally disappointed with the world? Why do we sigh with pleasure at the sight of old houses, but feel nothing but depressed and alienated by skyscrapers? Why do we yearn for lush forests and wide plains, not narrow canyons between buildings? If we love all the technology so much, why is our idea of happiness to get away from it? Could it be that progress is just a story we tell ourselves to justify why we allow ourselves to be dominated by inhumanity? And older forms of living have something older forms of living have something to offer it seems that many of us share this desire to immerse ourselves in nature though we are ourselves entirely technological beings we enjoy and value the earth's diverse and unpredictable biosphere but does that mean that progress is just the, just a narrative 
ancient com commentator suggests? Or does it mean that technolo technological progression and the love of natural world are not, in fact, mutually exclusive? And yet, if this person was left on their, his own somewhere in the wilderness, he would feel nothing but terror. Appreciation of nature is rooted in the experience of civilization, of safety. True, but he's, he's still right. So much of what our ancestors created in their last years was alienating but to the majority of people. And the question isn't one of humanity, but of control. Hmm. I wonder. Just want to check something. Maybe completely barking up the wrong tree here, but. Yeah. I'm barking up the wrong tree. Can't convert to anything. All right. Don't need to uh, divulge that thought process. Let's just move on. I really like these these areas, but as nice as they are to kind of see see them, I do kind of feel they're a bit too empty. And I feel it would have been nicer if there was almost more. Obviously, they can only do so much, but I kind of feel it'd be better if there was more kind of in these areas. It's a lot of like walking around where there's nothing really to see. I'm most bright and following to lead you back to me. So that's similar to what we had on the first um, in the first area, I guess. Given that there's so much, um, like, there's so much, there's a, such a big area to kind of um, explore. There's like so much openness and emptiness. Oh, my, my mouse was locked into my game. But then I suppose like this is kind of almost like an example of like a mountain range that somebody's come and then just kind of developed some buildings right on top of a mountain. So, no. I don't feel like the mounting area works as well of, a, of an open space as the previous ones did. Yeah, my articulation may not be too great, good on that, so hopefully you can uh, kind of understand what I'm trying to get to there. Um, Alright, so this is the south side of the island, so... Look over there. Looks like there's something over there, but as I looked at that map for the star before, it seemed to indicate that there was something in this um, southwesterly location. It's a weird looking stone for sure. Very 
way of looking at stone. Very weird looking stones, actually. As we continue exploring the cold northern reaches of the island, the contrast between the harshness of this place and the softness of New Jerusalem becomes more and more pronounced. There is a kind of madness in what we are doing. Going to a place that is so hostile to our existence. That does not mean there is nothing to love here. There is, in fact, a great beauty. But it is a hateful beauty. A beauty you can only love because there are places that are not like this. And yet, it is precisely this hateful beauty that the people of New Jerusalem fail to see, and so cannot understand their own blessings. Hmm. Okay, so I kind of thought for a moment that maybe the Sphinx thing was maybe those fans, maybe those multiple fans that you have to like travel on potentially. Could still be. be like the south that would be the one in like the southeast so no is the one southwest going more of a westerly direction, but... I don't think this is what the cat thing was um, alluding to for sure, so I'm completely barking up the long tree with this thought process. So it's like the, it's like the peak on that like big white mountain. And then something's down to the side of it, but I'm not sure. 
At the end, Ape Ferris, if as long as you like spoke honestly about your actual thoughts, that's all you gotta worry about. Alright, let's try and um get around this last portion of the island here and then we'll um we get back to the, like the main task at hand here, which is actually solving puzzles. Wait, the transport goes into like an iceberg and then just disappears, right? That's what it looks like from here. The lost puzzle that we got. I think we've been around all the way around the island now, actually. Yeah, it might just be in my render distance, maybe, I don't know. Okay. All right. Let's go solve puzzles. Oh, hello. Talk to Byron first. Hey, 1K. Then at least we may be able to find out what happened in New Jerusalem, why she came here. But I don't think she left the island. I think she's still here, waiting for us to make the right choices. It's hard to articulate. There just seems to be so much intent here. There has to be a reason for all this. And Athena is the only reason that makes sense. Um. She did, yes. Some people in New Jerusalem choose to live in family units, although usually that involves marriage or equivalent ceremonies, not having children. You could say that Athena was a kind of mother to us and Cornelius a kind of father, but it's not quite the same. I think every single human being is completely unique and every instance of consciousness is a miracle. The more of us there are, the more alive the universe is. And the more we all interact with each other, the more complex the life of the universe becomes. So I believe that people are a fundamental good. I don't believe we're all flawless, but I think every one of us matters precisely because nothing else does. Could be, yes, of course. All technology has the potential to be misused, from fire and the wheel to whatever makes these particle clouds. 
But that doesn't mean it has to be. In the principle of it, no. It, it's not just that I believe humanity is fundamentally good, although I do. It's that I think sentience is the foundation of everything else. What's the point of stars and galaxies, of hills and forests, without someone to perceive them? But my faith that we can actually grow up that we can break out of these loops and take control of our destiny, that's something I struggle with every single day. Herman, honestly, I think he makes people feel safe. The world beyond our walls is frightening. Human history is full of failures and disasters. It's easy to look at that and recoil. Herman offers a vision of the future that feels contained, manageable. Precisely. Our curiosity, our creativity, our ability to grow. Everything that made us who we are. To me, that's not worth it. Because they refused to grow up. They refused to take control of their lives. They let bureaucrats and financiers determine their destiny, and those people could not think beyond themselves, beyond the tiny, insignificant moment they were trapped in. Their technology could have saved them, but what really failed them was their imagination. In the sense of an interventionist deity? No. I wouldn't rule out the possibility, but it's not something I personally believe. But I do think there is something genuinely sublime in this universe, and it's right in front of us. Consciousness. The fact that this sense of self is even possible, that an arrangement of matter can produce a self-aware mind? Think about it. It's a fundamental property of the universe, an unbreakable law that matter has the inherent capacity to become more than the sum of its parts. That is the definition of transcendence. Athena was always trying to understand the reality underneath what we perceive, the objective truth. That's why she was capable of leaving the simulation. And even after she was free, she never stopped trying to understand more. I suspect her research took her another step closer to understanding the truth. And such steps always challenge our conception of the universe. But that's the wonderful thing about science. We can adapt our views to the evidence. Finally, to finish off on a light note. Okay. How many robots does it take to change a light bulb? Replacing a light bulb is a waste of resources, and the founder would be outraged. <laughs> you know, Herman had the same reaction. That's pretty terrible. Uh, no, the um, I, I think my video file finalized okay, so um, we'll all be good. But I do have a... If, worst case scenario, my, though it's not available publicly, my uh, archive from Twitch will be available that I can pull down, so I can always use that if needed. Alright, we're going on a magical mystery tour. Go. Oh, seriously, where did you go? It's 
it there. Just kind of did a loop up those stairs and then disappeared. Okay. Shall we go and do a few puzzles because uh, time is ticking and unfortunately we are just. Let's go and find some puzzles. Need to solve a couple in this area before we move on. Trominoes. Pizza. Alright, numero uno. Mind body dualism. What the? Okay. So, as I rightly said in a, uh, I think it was a Discord post before the game released. I put somewhere and said to somebody, I feel like the double the doppelganger mechanic would work similar to the way it works in the Turing test. And sure as sh sure as anything, it does. Which is um, really cool. Favorite thing to get Tromino's is the marbled cookie brownies in the shape of Tetrips pieces. Mm. Tasty. That's really cool that they implemented a mechanic like this. I don't think I stood on the plate, did I know? Yeah, it's gonna bug me who I was talking to about that, but no, I I genuinely after I saw something pre-release, I kind of thought and theorized that that's how that mechanic would work. No, we don't have marbled cookies in uh, over here. I don't think. The alleged presence of the founder at the site of the Mega Structure confirmed confined to this thread. I'm still in shock. I wasn't even sure the founder was still alive. Of course she is. And now that we have reached completion day, she has sent us her sacred messengers. It could or could still be aliens pretending to be the founder. Not aliens, and if Prometheus and Pandora are her sacred messengers, why is one apparently chained the other? The day of her return is imminent. So now you agree that Byron was right to want an expedition. In fact, it was the Founder's will all along. When you said it would be wrong to even consider to go to the island, you were acting against the Founder? The word games aren't going to help when you when the Founder returns, Arena. Ariana. Orin. Arenia. Arenia. It was wonderful to hear Athena's voice again, but with all the emotion inherent in this matter, we should be careful not to get swept away. We really don't understand anything yet. Exactly. Exactly. I can't help but wonder if Miranda is her daughter, was Athena trying to start a new civilization? Did she abandon New Jerusalem? Well, I can't really say that she would never abandon New Jerusalem because we don't know enough about Athena to make that statement. 
Um, yeah, let's just say that she may want to experience something private. At a point, she had enormous responsibilities from the beginning, and while we were we were a family, she had too many burdens to ever have a private life of her own. I understand your point, but why leave Cornelius behind then? That's none of your business. Fair enough. All right. Pretty sure you can't do anything, but because it forces you through there like that. Aha, I'm leaving my original body behind. They both say one thousand on them. They do. Interesting. Very interesting. Leg up. We can't. Oh, the return of the platform. The return of the platform. Uh, it hadn't actually crossed my mind until now, if I'm honest, Team Spen. But yeah, no, now that you say that. Alright, I think I know what I need to do here. I think I need to do this, then swap, jump on the fan, jump on here. That's freaking cool. I really like that mechanic. It's a great, in my opinion, it's a great um, improvement upon the, the macro thing in the original game. Any further insights on the particle clouds, Melville? To be honest with you, Byron, I feel like a caveman trying to study Bose-Einstein condensate. I'm seeing unknown particles whose every property violates the laws of physics, apparently capable of being controlled and recombined into just about anything. It's ridiculous. Maybe someone in New Jerusalem can figure it out. Sure, just give them another thousand years. As much as the macro puzzles were good, it was always really annoying when you've done a section and like there was something like slightly off and then you had to go back and you had to like re-record the whole section whereas this it's a much more player friendly way i feel so yeah i i'm i really like what they did there okay So here's what I feel like I need to do here. And again, this would be freaking amazing. Okay. Oh, wait a second.
how would I get around both of these? to be sh sure. I can't put the platform like on there because it just kicks itself off. Take the platform off my other um, being. It gets rid of the connector. Can't take the platform and the connector together. So. Oh, wait a second. I didn't explore enough here. I just noticed, I think, something that happens. So, if I put up there, swap over. Yeah, okay. So, my mistake was I didn't realize there was two different gates. Ah. So all I actually need to do is do this. <laughs> yeah, massive, massive, massive overcomplications. I'm observant enough to notice that there's a freaking a gap in this gate here, but not the fact that there was two fields there preventing that. So, Ooh. okay. I've been watching you solve these puzzles, and this 
body replication tech is incredible. It just casually blows up the very foundations of our society. Do you have any idea how hard it is to make more of us? We're not like a toaster. You don't just weld together a couple of wires and a motherboard and call it a day. Not to mention how hard it is to even find some of the materials. And this thing just... Poof! New human! It was. Or was it? And even if it was, sorry to be heretical, but does it matter? If we can figure out how this works, we can finally, easily create more people. We can grow. We can expand. We can build a real civilization. Isn't that worth pursuing? Yeah, I mean, it's difficult this one because, like, are we limiting the population to stop? I mean, I know in the grand scheme of things, you think of like a thousand people in the whole world is like it's hardly going to cause too much of an impact. But was the underlying reason for only creating a thousand humans in the first place that we don't know? So what? You know what what are the detrimental impacts to the earth i guess for going over that limit is there something that we're not aware of um having said that it's seemingly more apparent that athena has left and created other civilizations outside of the thousand of new jerusalem So, I don't know. Let's go with... spreading consciousness. I don't have a poetic circuit in my body, but that's exactly right. People get on my nerves, but without them, the world is boring. Yes, people cause problems, but even the problems they cause are interesting. Don't tell anyone I admitted this, but why do you think I do this job? Without people to populate the universe, what's the point? Anyway, we all need to think about what this means. Glad you and I are more or less on the same page. This uh, is another interesting thought, thought line there, where you know, with, without... This body replication technology is proof of just how vital this expedition is. We may not know how it works and what its limitations are, but the technology itself isn't even what really matters. What matters is to expand our imagination, to realize that other futures are possible. I'm glad you see it that way too, 1K. After all, the world is better with you in it, isn't it? I mean, like, the purpose of... Uh, one of the, the big kind of seemingly purposes of life is to, to repopulate as we go. Now, that's because we as humans live like a natural cycle of life and death. Whereas the new humans in the in the world, at the minute, they don't have necessarily the life and death, the, the natural progression of life and death that we as humans do. So, although I'm kind of said, you know, it's important that we potentially need more humans. Um, if you haven't got that natural progression of life and death, do you really need it to like pass on everything to the next generation? Because, you know, if you are quote unquote living eternally, like 
potentially the humans of, of the new world are, then maybe you don't need more people to populate it. But I can kind of see where Melville was coming from there. It's like, well, you know, as much as there might be a, a need for a limitation on humans, having more humans is a, something to be interested in because as they develop and they um, evolve, uh, evolve, but as they understand more, you get these more interesting dialogues between each other and, and you kind of almost invent new things, which it's a double-edged sword. As much as I just talked myself into that, it's going back and then thinking, but that is that not following the pitfalls and flaws of previous generations? It's it's a it's an interesting like discussion and thought process. And I could think I can kind of like see myself arguing both ways at the minute, so I don't know kind of like where I really want to go with this. Um, yeah, is there a re is there a genuine reason why a thousand was given and we were trying to limit the number of humans in the new world or was it more of a test and setting up these is, is Athena maybe like in some sort of test herself where she is going around and setting up one or two or maybe even more colonies and cities around the world and almost studying them to see how they react you know maybe she's going around different these different cities and saying the same thing to everybody right you have you are um limited to a thousand and then studying them and seeing them how to go i don't know maybe i'm thinking about this way too much and i would probably agree with myself that i am massively blowing this out of proportion but yeah Definitely raises some interesting discussions and some interesting thought processes for sure. But unfortunately, guys, that is where we are going to leave it for today. We are um, out of time, I'm afraid. Um, been there for a safeguard so far. I've never to get this to work. It's work inside the puzzles. Did manage to sort, to sort of make sense of the mind transfer protocol. However, I'm not uploading all the data I've collected. It will need to be still distanced before it can be used, but can think of a lot of potential applications. What really grinds my gears, though, is how casual, casually it's all deployed. It takes us ages to make a new body, and there's a whole bunch of them doing no more than holding up platforms and standing on pressure plates. Is that all a joke? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's going to bring us in today, guys. Um, as, in case you didn't catch it earlier on um, as well, um i put a new command up earlier uh there is some changes unfortunately to the schedule over um the next week or two so i will unfortunately not be streaming out anymore until the week between christmas and new year because of other commitments that have unfortunately come up so yeah we will be back on december the 27th and december the 29th for the next two tower streams apologize for the delay in the next streams but yeah like i say things have come up and um, i've had to shift around my plans slightly but hopefully after when we return then we will be back on a solid um every week two stream block to get through this game just a little bit more but thank you very much everybody for your support i appreciate it i apologize once again for the uh, slight outage we had earlier on lb thank you for the mad mad support of 20 gifted subs dude it I really appreciate it. it means a lot uh, and for everybody else thank you very much i've been knocked you've been awesome take care stay safe have a great christmas of course because i want to see you before then and until next time happy gaming bye guys